What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down a press release that all wide receivers need to learn. So I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and would like a daily training schedule to follow, check out that very first link in the description below where you can get access to our ultimate eight-week wide receiver workout plan. What you'll get access to is over 500-plus wide receiver drills and gym exercises all mapped out with the exact sets and reps to do and examples of each specific drill. So check out that very first link in the description below. If you're interested, fellas, let's get started with this video. So this first release we're going to be talking about here is something called a split release. So we're going to be going over the different types of split releases that you guys can use, variations to it, and the exact situations to use this split release. So I'm going to play this clip here full speed from Tank Dell. So a split release is pretty much exactly how it sounds. You want to split your feet, come to balance, and it's almost a way to kind of freeze that DB off the line of scrimmage. So like I said, we're going to look at variations of this, but more specifically, talk Talk about the technique and when to use it. So I like this split release when this DB is right up on the line of scrimmage, not giving us any room to kind of operate and any room to work. Something we talk a lot about on this channel is like when a DB's, you know, off maybe about a yard or so, whether he's inside shade, whether he's head up, whether he's outside shade, we always talk about closing the distance, right? I want to try to step onto his toes. I want to try to make him miss. I want to attack him vertically. But if this DB's right up on the line of scrimmage, there's really no room to attack him vertically. So I almost have to make him miss laterally. Now, you don't want to dance behind the line of scrimmage and waste a bunch of time. You want to be efficient. You want to be fast. But this split release is a great way to do that. So, like I said, it's pretty much exactly how it sounds. On a split release, you want to take your front foot in your stance, and you are going to move it out. So, you're in your stance here. Tank Dell has his left foot up. His left foot goes out, and his back foot goes up. Both feet need to make contact with the grass at the exact same time. The mistake a lot of wide receivers make on this part of the release is that they think that this move or this split with their feet because it's kind of like a hesitation release needs to be slow. It does not need to be slow. This is like a quick split of your feet. The both feet hitting the ground for a split second at the exact same time, that's like kind of the freeze element to this release or the hezzy element to this release, if you will. But both feet make contact with the grass at the exact same time. Now, the other thing that's most important about this split is that when you land, we have to be just slightly outside of my shoulder frame with my feet. What I teach a receiver to probably be this this far as Tank Dell, maybe not, but this position with your feet outside of your shoulder frame allows you to be in a positive shin angle position. What do I mean by that? You see how both of his like legs, and normally I talk a lot about receivers when they cut not having their knees caved in. On a split release, it's okay if you're in that position because when you come to balance, you have to be able to push in either direction. So if your knees are caved in, that means that you're in a position ready to push and drive off of either leg, depending on how this DB moves, because this split release is a form of a reaction release. So we're going to talk about that as this video gets on the different reactions that you could use for this split release. But that's essentially the technique. You both feet want to hit the ground. The foot that is up steps out. The foot that is back steps up, make contact at the exact same time. Now, the second mistake that guys will make on this split release is they'll split their feet. But you see how Tank Dell stays at this low explosive pad level position. He doesn't pop up. A lot of wide receivers will do this split release. They split their feet and they'll stand straight up in the air. They'll expose their chest and their feet will be very close close together. That is the easiest way to get jammed. Because remember, we use this release in a situation where the DB is right up on the line of scrimmage and right up in my face. So we have to make sure when I do this, I'm splitting my feet coming to balance, but I pretend, pretend like you're underneath a small doorway. You don't want to pop up and hit your head. You're in your stance. You don't want to pop up and hit your head on the door. Stay below the small doorway. So we're in an explosive position. Now, like I said, we want to use this when the DB is right up on the line of scrimmage in my face. But you could use this if he's head up. You could use this if he's inside shade, you could use this if he's outside shade. It really kind of just, you could use it in any given scenario, I feel. That's why I like the split release. Because think about it. Let's say this DB was lined up inside shade and you do this split release and he holds his inside leverage. You could give a little hip fake. You could give this almost like a, I call it like a hip sway where you just like kind of sell with your upper half to the inside, but you still maintain this position of balance and then you get up into the route. Same idea if the DB was lined up outside shade. DB's lined up outside shade, you come to balance, you give this little sway with the upper half or maybe even a little bit of a jab step to the outside and take the inside release. You could use it against any type of leverage when that DB is right up in your face. Now, like I said before, you could also use this against a DB who maybe disguises his coverage. So you see how this DB is lined up head up. Let's say, for example, Tank Dell does this split release, but on the split release, this DB jumps and overcommits to the outside. 
Dell could just take the inside release because he got to a position of balance. That's why it's so important, fellas, that both feet hit the ground at the exact same time because you could react either way. So split release is a great release, fellas, for a DB right up on the line when you were trying to react off of him, trying to read his leverage and have to get up into the route. Make him miss laterally in this specific scenario. So now there are a couple different variations of the split release that I would like to talk about. The second one here is also going to be from Tank Dell. And this is a situation, it's kind of tough to see the DB right here, but you'll see him in a second. He's maybe about a yard off from him and he has like outside leverage slightly, slightly outside leverage. And Tank Dell is going to be running, it's kind of like a corner or like an out route, maybe like a bench route. It, it honestly could be used for any one of those three routes. But let's watch what he does here. So he closes the space and then hits a split release. So that's kind of a more advanced, I guess you could say, variation of this split because this DB is off. So you see how we have a yard of space. He's lined up shaded to the outside. We have to run an outside breaking route. So a lot of receivers, the mistake that they will make is that this DB's lined up outside shade, but they have to run an outside route, so they'll force the route. They'll run up, give like a quick jab inside, and then take this outside release and go break to the out. But when this DB is lined up outside shade, we know that his goal is to protect the outside. So he doesn't want to give up the outside release. Force everything to the inside, especially when a wide receiver has his split cut down and he's lined up closer to the hash or closer to the formation right? So that to be smart. He's going to keep that outside leverage. So with my release, my game plan should be, okay, I'm going to attack him. I'm going to close the space, maybe give him a move, threaten his leverage and take the inside release to give that quarterback room to throw me open. Now, when you close the space with him, this split release is great because remember, when both feet hit the ground at the exact same time like this and you come to balance, let's say this DB, DB shades to the inside. We could still take the outside release. Ideally, we would love an outside release on an outside breaking route. But again, we see that he's outside shade pre-snap. DBs are crafty. They will try to disguise their leverage. And a lot of times, press releases are about reacting just as much as it is having a plan off the line. So like technique of this release, Tank Dell's lined up here with his left foot up. He steps with the right foot to square up the DB, and then he splits his feet. Both feet, he steps with the right foot. And so since his right foot is essentially the foot that is up, he goes right right foot steps out, back foot steps up, gets to this position of balance, maintains a good low explosive pad level position. This DB jumps to the outside, so he just reacts, pushes off, takes the inside release, and gets up into this route. So that's a textbook, like I would consider this closing space, then hitting a split release, or maybe like a skip into a split release. But that's the technique behind it, and that's the situation you'd wanna use it. Now, could you use it if the DB was inside shade? Absolutely, let's say this DB was lined up inside shade here, you could maybe step with your left foot, then split with the left foot out, bring the right foot up, see how he plays it, shades to the inside, take the outside release. It's all about coming to balance and getting that quick read on the DB. Now, again, when I play this full speed here from Tank Dell, you see how his feet don't really, like, it's not a slow split. It is a quick, there's some twitch to the split release. Guys, the hesitation to this is both feet hitting the ground at the exact same time, not necessarily the speed of the split release. That is textbook. That's exactly how you want to do that release. I'm going to play it full speed one more time. Great job closing the space, bringing the line of scrimmage to this DB, then hitting that split. Okay, so now, next scenario I want to talk about with this split release is against a more so physical DB who gets hands, right? So we talked about in the very first clip, we want to use this split when this DB is right up on the line of scrimmage, not necessarily giving us a whole lot of room to operate, right? So when he's not giving us room to operate, like, chances are he's probably going to try to get hands on us, right? So we have to use this split release wisely and also have the right technique to avoid the physical like jam of a DB, right? So let's watch what this wide receiver does. He does the split release, hits him, dips the shoulder, and is able to get up into this like quick slant or like in route, however you want to think of it, right? Now let's talk about this. Remember reason why we don't want to pop my chest up and we don't want to have a narrow base is because if this DB gets hands and I am in a narrow base with my chest straight up in the air, I'm going to get jammed five, six yards back or just be completely knocked off balance and lose timing with my quarterback. I have to stay in an explosive position off the line. See, no normally against a physical DB, a release that we talk a lot about is something called a step back release, right? Where you're lined up here, you take a step back, you create some space for yourself. But not a lot of coaches allow that release. Not a lot of offenses work well with that release. And a lot of you guys just don't have the time to do that release. So this split release is great for this type of situation. So remember, your front foot goes out, your back foot goes up. So he splits his feet. He's in a balanced position here. 
His pad level almost like comes down in a way. You see how he's lined up in his stance? His pad level sinks down because he knows that if this guy gets hands, but he has this base with his feet slightly outside of his frame, he's going to be able to stay on balance. He's going to be able to swat the hands, dip the shoulder, work up into the route, and get physical off that ball and move forward. Anytime that we have a physical DB, we always want to be attacking and moving forward. Anytime we're against press, we cannot waste time off the line because that is his goal with the hand technique. So against a physical DB, the split release is a great alternative to the step back and i honestly think it's probably a better release because remember when this db's crowd in the line of scrimmage we'd have no space to close with him we have to make him miss laterally right and that split release is an efficient way to do that without dancing and wasting a bunch of time off the line so let's play this again full speed one more time great job hitting that split dipping the shoulder and then getting up into this route on that dig all right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like our eight-week wide receiver on-field and gym workout schedule, everything the wide receivers need to do in the gym and on the field, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that. I'll see you guys next time.